Hi everyone, welcome to the SME Business Academy's interviews. I'm John Covey, I'm a multi-award winning coach, sales trainer, speaker, uh, an all-round great guy. Um, at, the biz- at the SME Business Academies, we obviously find, you can, well, you can find valuable information. And today, right here, we sat with Patrick M. Powers. Uh, for everyone who's not already subscribed, there's a little button that'll be floating somewhere around here, and you can click that to make sure that you get more of these fantastic insights. Um, so, Patrick, I've, I've had a quick look around, and you're an author, a speaker, a lead generation trainer. You've got um, several highly acclaimed books, which is Turn Your Contacts Into Cash and The, Risk, uh, the Risk-Free Startup, uh, creator of many innovative seminars and training programs such as Street Smart Networking and Weapons of Mass Persuasion. That's, a, that's, that's a, an achievement. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. God. Fantastic. I mean, that's that's good. That's good. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about yourself first, I suppose, before we continue. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, most people know me as the founder of Entrepreneurs in London. That's what's, uh, you know, kind of most famous for. Uh, Entrepreneurs in London is the biggest business meetup in Europe. We're now 17,000, almost 500 members, I think. Excellent. And um, originally born in Denmark. Started my first business at 21. I just had a, an entrepreneur inside, you know, that needs to get out. And, um, yeah. The only education I have, though, is a landscape gardener. So okay. there's no really business background. There was no, uh, there was no real business people in my family. Although my parents were actually, they were actually self-employed when uh, when I, you know, when I was a kid until I was five years. Um, their their property was I don't know what they call it in English expropriated by the government. Like they needed to build some high rises, and so they were forced to sell. Okay. Um, at five years. And, they were they were absolutely uh, horrified when when I told them I want to get into business because they were struggling as business owners, right? They were they were you know just working their butt off. So they were really against me getting into business, but I did at twenty one, and went bankrupt within a year. I lost my house, lost my car, everything, and uh, but you know. It was one of the most valuable experiences for me because I, I felt what it was like to be your own boss. You just get up in the morning sure. and you can decide your own day. You can just do whatever you want. You know, it's an amazing feeling. So, um, so I pushed on and you know started to started to look into how I could start a business with less risk. And um, and so I started a home based business and then another one and another one and another one because I failed. I just kept on failing, failing, failing. And then about 13 years ago, I finally had my breakthrough and became quite successful overnight, even to the to the degree for uh, that that you know I, uh, I I kind of retired. I became really really lazy. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's that's a, that's a that's an epic story. Well, and it, it, it doesn't end. <laughs> more, more to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I traveled for a few years, um, learned more about marketing, uh, just business in general, marketing, sales, persuasion, copywriting. And um, lived in the Caribbean, in Spain, and just traveled the world. It was pretty awesome. And um, and then I decided to sell my business, which is both one of my best and the worst decisions because I should have had a plan B in place. Okay. I was just too overconfident. Yeah. And uh, thought, hey, you know, now I'm just I'm the king of business, right? <laughs> I can do anything. And um, yeah. So so what happened is I, I sold the business, and then everything started to go bad. I was living in the Dominican Republic at that time. And, Beautiful, beautiful location, and running out of money. Right. Well, so that's been a free story. Came back to England, started entrepreneurs in London. Uh, after a while, after some of the toughest years, probably the toughest years of my life, where I was close to living in a street for a couple of years. Really. Um, just really, really, really bad. Really seriously bad side for me. Um, then uh, finally had my breakthrough about three years ago and got back on top. Fantastic. So, so what was that? What was that moment? What was the imprint that gave you the breakthrough? The first one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that was, um, well, it was basically, I think it was, a, it was a combination of a lot of different things, right? I, I, it's, it's rarely one thing. Um, but if I can say there was one thing, it was just complete and utter desperation. Right. Uh, emotional desperation that I was just so fed up with my life. I was so fed up with not having any money. Um, just an emotional pain about a, uh, a relationship that just uh, you know broke up, and um, 
yeah, it was just like I just had to. I just had to get out of there. I just had to make something happen, and I did. Yeah, that's amazing. And it is interesting that it's the emotional side that always wins, isn't it? It always pushes you. I mean, one of the things I say to people all the time is that you get everything that you must have in your life. And, and I think that when you start changing that must, so it's the emotion, you know, I'm fed up with this, I need to make a change. Um, it, it just everything becomes full circle. So the second time when, when, when like the last so three years ago, you said you've had your other breakthrough now, what was the kind of, what was the driver there? <laughs> There was, there was also desperation and fear and anger, right? So let me, let me, let me tell you what happened. It was, it was kind of a funny story. And for, uh, I mean, for a while, for, for, for three years, I've been extremely broken behind my rent all the time. And I was living in a really bad neighborhood in Canning Town. And my, my neighbor was a complete scumbag. I think he was a drug dealer. He was definitely a drug user. A completely <laughs> insane person. And he, he had two cats that he like grossly mistreated. Like they were underfed, um, he was violent and all that kind of stuff. So one of them actually just uh, stopped hanging out in our backyard and I stopped feeding it. Yeah. And never went back back to him again. He was just hanging out in our backyard out. all the time. <laughs> and then he got pregnant. Okay, and I thought, oh my God, now what do I do? I'm not supposed to have cats in the house. Right. So I just, you know, I just, I just took it in to, to, to have it have its, its cats inside. Um, so... So basically, um, so basically, you know, and I was, I was of course worried about what the landlords could say and if he found out and all that. So, was, you know, every time he came around, I was hiding them under the bed. <laughs> so, but of course, as they got bigger, it got harder and harder. Anyway, one day, one of them, um, one of them got an injury, and I don't know how it happened. They, they must have been playing together, but suddenly, suddenly, his eyes, one of his eyes, starts to swell up, like really massively. Yeah. I was like. And I was sweating bullets. I mean, I was literally physically sweating because I was I was so worried about it because I knew I didn't have money to take it to the vet. Um, and like, if there was anything serious that would that you know needs to take care of, like, what would I do? Yeah. And then I became really, really angry with myself, like really seriously angry that I could end up in this situation that I couldn't even take care of a little creature that I cared about. Sure, sure. Um, and so I called one of my friends and said, "Look, I need money and I need it now." Do you, do you want do you want to invest in my business? And what do you have in mind? <laughs> it was just like that. Yeah, yeah. He, he gave me some money, and uh, funny enough, a few hours later, that swelling in the eye I actually actually disappeared. It started to go down, so I actually never needed the money for anything to do with the cat. Uh, but I took that money and put it into pay per click on Facebook because I tested enough about. Uh, Pay per click. Yeah. Then I knew that I had I had it down. I knew I could get the clicks really really low price, and um, and that they were actually converting. Okay. So I, I turned on the volume for the pay per click. So instead of uh, instead of like five pounds per week, now it was like one hundred fifty pounds per week or 100, 100 pounds per week or something like that. Yeah, sure. And literally overnight, our events exploded. I mean, we started growing like crazy. So, so that was it, and then shortly thereafter, we became the biggest business meetup in Europe. That's amazing. So this is this is the entrepreneurs of London. Yeah. So what? what in, in London. Sorry, entrepreneurs in London. So what? What? What is it that entrepreneurs in London actually do then? Is it? It's a community of entrepreneurs. Uh, we are we are hosted at meetup.com. So we meet up, um, meet up, uh, you know, regularly uh, for either networking or for talks with top entrepreneurs. Is basically it. Fantastic, fantastic. So that's three years old. Uh, no, six, six, seven years old now, but it's three years ago. That it changed. Three and a half, three and a half years ago that it really started to take off. Fantastic, that's amazing. That's really, really good. Uh, right, okay, so uh, just a few questions just to run through, and this will obviously tie into your journey that you've been on so far, because it sounds like it's been a wonderful journey uh, where it's had a lot of ups and downs. Yes, that's always been wonderful. <laughs> that's always been wonderful, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so, so the first question really is, what is your motivation? Freedom. 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 There's several things, but really what drives me is the freedom of choice to be able to do anything anywhere, to travel the world, and second, to really make a, a big impact. Um, I, I don't necessarily have these grand visions of making an impact on 200 million people or something like that. Uh, I just I just want to make a big impact on, on a few people. 
right? So the few businesses that I work with, I really want to help them tra- transform, turn around. Sure. Um, I just I just get such a buzz out of, of seeing somebody who was doing the average or actually struggling with a business, and then suddenly the business is just flying, and you can see the happiness, and you know you can see the satisfaction in their eyes and all that. That really seriously drives me. That's, that's amazing. That's so amazing. And and again, really interesting the way you look at things. I think that when obviously when we're going into business and when we're first starting out it's we, we, we seem to want to have this multi-million pound um company behind us and we think it's the money that's going to bring us the happiness but it's actually like you say it's the freedom isn't it it's the flexibility yeah. to, to exactly. do just, just having enough money to, to live a life of freedom and not, not even worry about money you just know that they're going to come in um you have a good business and uh, and then that you're doing something that you that you're proud of that you can uh, it derives satisfaction from that's really Fantastic. That's really what bring you happiness. That's amazing. Uh, okay, so the second question is: is what's your mindset like? Is there any is there any processes that you run through on a day to day basis to like an hour of power or you know, meditation, anything like that to keep your mindset in check? Um, I, I always try to start the day by listening to some audios to get me into the right mindset, um, or to go through some kind of uh, mental exercise, you know, to just to envision my dreams and my goals and what I need to accomplish today. Um, so yeah, but it, it's, it's not very, these days I'm not very disciplined about it. Okay. Um, I, and I think, I think the reason is that now by default, I'm kind of just have a good mental attitude. I have, I, I don't need to pump myself up to have it. Yeah. It's more like, it's almost like these days, sometimes a little bit waste of time. Sure. Because I'm, I'm just by default, you know, I just, it's just there. Need, yeah, it's yeah. just there. And then, so why waste your time with it instead of just getting to work? Like okay. Just get into work, get it done, you know, get some sales calls done, get some work done and improve your marketing and, or the marketing of your clients, you know, that's it. Fabulous, fabulous. Yep. Um, what made you start a business? I know we kind of touched on this a little bit when you was, you know, from, from there, but what <laughs> what was the real drive for you to start a business? Uh, I basically, I hated being an employee. I hated doing the same thing over and over again. I think, I think also you know, about my motivation, what, one thing that drives me is, and I never actually thought about that until now, I just realized that, is variety, just variety. I just get bored of doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So yeah. being an, an employee, they, you know, there's very few jobs that doesn't get monotonous. Sure, right? sure. Now, now, these days, I've learned to accept also as business owners, there's part of your business that, that is going to be monotonous, right? And, and, don't try to fight it. Just just accept it and get it get it over with. Get it done. Build your business. You know, the more you build your business, the more you can outsource to t- the uh, either outsource or hire people to take over the stuff that you don't necessarily like. Yeah. Uh, but until then, stop bitching about it. Stop complaining about it. Stop wish. Stop wishing it. It would be another way. Just get it done. Just get it done. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so how? So, how- so you said well, I actually didn't answer your question, but what? Oh, so yeah. What's what made you start the business? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I hated being an employee, but there was one particular particular um, situation where my boss. I'm not going to go into the pre the precursor. Basically, I was a landscape gardener, and there was a project that was uh, being being drastically delayed because of bad weather. I mean, it was the middle of winter, and you know, I know my my boss was under extreme pressure, yeah. and he just took it out of me. Right. And there was there was a situation. It was funny enough because I was not the most senior person on that uh, on that crew, uh, and not really the ones who was just supposed to be in charge. But he kind of just put me in charge for some reason. I guess he saw me as more competent or whatever. Um, and he just screamed into my face in front of all my colleagues. Really? You're completely hopeless. You will not even be a milk delivery boy. And that's kind of an expression we use in Denmark when you're like really bad and hopeless. That you won't even have it to be a meal delivery boy. That situation was like, okay, I am going to be my own boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is, I mean, that's that's enough push to make anyone want to be their own boss. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so you were talking about like on the last part of this question here was about just you know just get into work, get it done. Do you know, and I suppose that's part of the next question is is how is it that you make things get done, or how do you plan your day and stay focused on on the stuff that you need to get done. It's, it's focus is a is a hard thing for a lot of people. Um, you know, these days it's easy to get distracted by social media. But I, I have a list. You know, I write lists of things. I learned this really really simple principle or or strategy, whatever, from um, 
Oh, what's the guy's name from The Secret? The old guy, the white hair guy. Oh, Bob Proctor. Yeah, Bob Proctor. I heard him. Heard him lie. and said, "Okay, here's my secret to success. Be before I go to bed at night, I write a list of the things I need to do tomorrow. Then, when I get up in the morning, I look at the list and then I do it. Yeah. <laughs> it really, it really, really, really does work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just you know, and just do that list and not be distracted by anything else. Sure. You know, complete focus. There's there's power in focus. So no distract, no excuses, no distractions. Just finish that list. And one of the best tips about productivity that I heard was to not uh, read emails or not uh, participate in any social e social um, social media or not even take any phone calls until after 12 o'clock. Until after 12, yeah. After noon, right? Unless it's absolutely 100% necessary, but especially social media and email, no social media and email until after 12 o'clock. And then just like in the morning, focus on money producing activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not plans, not doing web work, but what exactly what's going to bring in the money, okay? Sales calls, following up with clients, so on and so on. Brilliant. Whatever, whatever you need to get done to get the money in. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is, is, is a lot of startups, entrepreneurs, and even mature businesses, they forget that they've still got to get the business. They've still got to bring the money in. Yeah. And I think that that is a big issue that I see with a lot of people is that they get that busy doing the work that they forget to actually do the stuff that creates the work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, how do you handle defeat? Mm. That's a good question. How do I handle defeat? Um, well, you look you look at your prior victories and just just keep your eyes on the goal. So you look at what's what's happened in the past that was that's proved that you can do it yep. in the future, and then refocus your goals, your 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 sights on your goals and your dreams and your vision. You just keep on going forward. Uh, it's a matter of focus. It's simply a matter of focus. So you can sit there and focus on, oh, well, you know, this happened, that was bad, and then how you know how horrible this is, or you can focus on what do I need to get done. You know what I need to happen, or uh, what I need to do to make what I want to happen happen. Yeah, brilliant, fantastic. No, I 100% agree. That's that's something that makes such a big impact. Um, right. Okay. So, what gives you the most happiness from the things that you do? Uh, in my work. Yes. Well, that again is seeing somebody make breakthroughs. Like you know, when I see that what I do and recommend people to do and help them do that it actually is working, it's just like you know, I just get so happy. Like. You know, recently in a new client I had, they they tripled their leads overnight, decreased uh, decreased their lead price by seventy five percent, and I was just like, yes, because I can see I've made an impact in yeah. the business, um, and that just really makes me happy. Brilliant, that's yeah, and that's what it's about, isn't it? You know, add the value. Yeah, and and Absolutely. I think, I mean, like every, everything that I that I've read and seen and, and and studied is that if you want more abundance in your life, add more value. Definitely. And, and for what you're saying there, so you've, recruit, you've reduced the what the, the the lead cost by seventy five percent. Yeah, and tripled the leads overnight. And tripled the leads overnight. I mean, that's value. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so, so if we had to kind of encompass all of this, what's the one thing that you're trying to achieve? Um, the one thing that I'm trying to achieve for myself, I can, I can think we we all have goals that are very personal for you, for, for ourselves, and then, you know, for, for our community or, or the world or whatever. For myself, um, it's definitely freedom, the freedom that, you know, I had for, uh, you know, 10 years ago when, um, when I was just traveling the world, I was just completely, I mean, you heard about the four hour work week. I was probably doing the four hour work month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I messed it up and now I'm rebuilding it back again. And uh, I'm very, very close actually on Thursday. So that's in three days. I'm actually moving to Tobago in the Caribbean. Right. Uh, how long I'm going to be there, I'm not sure. But uh, so very close to achieving, achieving that dream again. Um, this time, I'm not going to be as lazy. And I accept working harder than last time, and I actually enjoyed working harder than, than back then. So, um, working more than four hours a week is is definitely okay with me. Yeah. But it's just having the choice to, from time to time, like every month, maybe take a, take a week off, and um, that actually should be within. I would say that, that is within reach in the next two to three weeks, actually. Excellent. So yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. 
So, so what, what kind of hours do you work currently? Second. What, what kind of hours are you currently working? Oh, that's a good question. Because I don't really track it that much. I mean, some days I just take half a day off. Um, I'm a little bit unstructured in my work. Some days I probably work 12 hours. I would say I probably work about 35, 40 hours a week. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, no, I mean, with weekends, yeah, probably a little bit more, but not, not much. Not much so more, it's not yeah. like I'm, I'm completely busting, busting my... Your hind. No. <laughs> yeah. And I suppose, like you're saying there, if you're being on, you know, you're keeping that focus and you're staying on point and you're getting your time to be used really effectively and productive, then then you can, you can you don't have to be doing 70, 80, 90 hour weeks. Mm, absolutely. Well, I mean, the reality is that you might have to in the beginning. Um, but, you know, I mean, if you, if you keep on going like that, you know, you burn out at some point. Right. So you have to you have to move to a, to a position where you can um, you can work less. And by the way, this is a very 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 important distinction for small businesses. So many small businesses will never ever realize their dreams because they're constantly using or, or solely using manual marketing. Right. And so manual marketing is whatever you have to something you, where, where you have to be there to to get it done. Yeah. So go on networking events interacting with people on, on uh, social media, um, producing articles, um, uh, making cold calls, and so on, so on, so on. Sure. If you don't at some point or you plan at, you know, at least quickly to get some kind of an automated marketing system in place, you will never be free. Sure. You just will never be free and you will burn out because when you start in your business, you didn't start to sit and interact with people on Facebook. You didn't, I mean, your passion is not going out to networking events. Your passion is not making cold calls. Those are all activities you do to get the business. Yeah. Right. But your passion lies somewhere else, doing the actual business, you know, whatever it is that you do. So when you're taking so much time uh, time to actually build the business, you know, interacting with people and all that, you are, you're removing yourself from your passion, right? You're removing your, yourself from what feeds your soul. Yeah, and so you're going to be more and more more unhappy with your business and more and more stressed out because you're doing less and less of the stuff that you really want to do and more stuff that you don't want to. Do. Absolutely. So, what what advice would you give someone about automation? And is there any is it, is it software? Is it is it um, outsource it to people? What's what's the best advice for somebody there? Well, it could be it could be uh, both of them. It could be um, like a lot of different things. But but the most important thing is that you have to you have to have a sales funnel or marketing funnel, right? So you've got to have a lead capture mechanism yeah. that is really compelling. Set up paid advertising. I mean, that's that's the key. You've got to have paid advertising because paid advertising you can scale. You can't scale yourself. Yeah, sure. Right. So that's that's again that's what I did when we exploded on North London. I tested enough with pay per click that I knew that this is working. Then I got the money for it, and then we increased it. We just increase the volume overnight sure. and boom, it just went boom, right? So you can scale it and you can scale it more or less infinitely. Um, you know, not necessarily infinitely, but you can scale it massively. So yeah. again, instead of buying 10 clicks a day, you can go now, we tested it. You test that the sales funnel is converting, yeah. you're generating a lead and you're converting enough of the leads that you're making a profit oh, yeah. from, from, from them, you know, including the cost of the, the click price of the paid advertising. It doesn't have to be clicks. It can be, you know, advertising in a magazine or whatever it is, sure. but that the advertising is funded and profitable. At that point, then you just scale it. Yeah. Bam. By a thousand. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's amazing. Excellent. I mean, that's some really quality value there for, for everybody. There. Um, what, what are your values? What's your personal values? Um, again, freedom, integrity, uh, fun, that would be three, three good one. Um, adventure. I think those supposed to be the main, the, the main ones. Yeah, which is why you're moving to Tobago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Fun, freedom, yeah. adventure. Yeah, absolutely. Part of the fun for me is fishing. Fishing. I love fish. Fishing yeah. and, and just experience nature, just being in nature. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. I, and I'm sure you'll get plenty of that in Tobago. It's supposed to be some of the best in the world. Really. So, yeah. we'll, we'll have to uh, you'll have to keep us updated on this absolutely <laughs> um, who um, 
What's inf- what's influenced you the most? Is it is it like do you know? Is it a person? Is it a, an environment? Is it an economy? Do you know what what's the biggest influence for you? Uh, it's definitely people that's done well. It, you know, some of the, some of the early influences I had was Tony Robbins, uh, Stuart Wilde. Um, but but lately, I mean, the people that's really made it, been the most the most impact on my life has been my coaches, and and the biggest one was was Peggy Long. Um, she just taught me a, a coaching system and a way of operating myself and to relate to other people to to be a leader. That's just like it's spectacular. It's completely changed my life. That's great. That's great. But uh, well, I've <laughs> kind of said there, which is the next question, which is, uh, who is your hero? Yeah, that would be that would be the same people. Same people. Yeah. Just, just just you know, really really great entrepreneurs that has done things. To, um, that has achieved things against all the odds. You know, I just, I just get inspired by those kind of things. Like when, when they go out and everybody says this is never going to happen. You know, forget about it. And then they go out and do it, and do it anyway, it and against all odds and and with lots of challenges. That really seriously inspires me. That's amazing. Uh, do you do you read? Do you read, and if so, what? Yeah, sure. I don't read that much anymore, to be honest. Um, I more listen to audios. And um, I used to read tons and tons and tons of books. Um, I still, I, actually, now that I think of it, I, it's funny. I actually started reading again lately. It's funny. I actually, some, it's like something that's just happened uh, so unconsciously. I guess I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah, I actually started reading a lot more about sales lately, uh, especially sales. Okay. Yeah. So, so, um, so yeah. Not, not. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm doing really, really good at sales, but. I realized uh, I don't just want to do good. I want to do amazing. So um, yeah, I have a Kindle. We we quite frequently on Kindle nowadays. Yeah. But there was there was a point in time, and I don't you know I definitely don't read nearly as much anymore because these days I'm more into just producing. You yes. know, instead of reading, I, I want to write instead, or I want to produce content. I want to do something that make a difference to people. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. because reading is for your own benefit, it's not for other people's benefits. At a certain point. At a certain point, you got to realize, like, lots of the people that get stuck in that learning loop, they just keep on learning, learning, learning forever and not take action. At a certain point, you got to just make a decision, okay, I know enough now to, to take go. action. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. To just go out there and do it. I mean, that doesn't mean that you, you can you, you have to stop reading because you can, you know, read half an hour in the morning and then go out there and kick ass, right? But you've got you to make that shift and say, okay, enough of the constant learning without action. I'm going to take action now. And go out there and make a difference in the world because just learning for yourself, that's not providing value, right? That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, so, Mark, so you don't read the news no more. You create the news. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, do you have any like what what would what would be the well, let's say the top three tips for someone who's just starting up or an entrepreneur that's just getting into the first business? Do you know whether it's Someone who's just wanting to explode. You know, what would the best? What would the kind? I don't know. That's like the top three tips. What would they be? Okay, get a mentor, coach. Uh, learn marketing and sales. All right. So that was three. Sorry. Sorry. Get a mentor, coach. Learn marketing. Learn sales. Fantastic. All right. I, I I have this this kind of saying. Uh, you know, at my talks, I always say that you only have three choices as a business owner. Either you become good at marketing. You hire a good marketer, or you die broke. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, true, true, yeah. very true. Yeah, like it's it's all about marketing today. I mean, you got to have sales skills as well. Um, you know, you might be in a, in a in a lucky situation where you can you can hire. You have enough funds to hire those skills, um, but you can't you can't be without certain certain amount of it yourself. Because the thing is, if you if you if you're completely clueless about marketing and sales, how are you going to recognize a good marketer or a good salesperson, right? I mean, good sales. I mean, somebody who talks a good, uh, you know, they talk up a good storm, or they they they're not necessarily good good salespeople just yeah. because they're good talkers. Yeah, absolutely. Right? People, right? So you gotta have to, you know you understand marketing and sales a little bit deeper level to be able to recognize the good ones, uh, because otherwise, I guarantee you will hire the wrong ones. Definitely. So so yeah, so learn enough about sales and marketing that you can actually you you have an insight into yourself. Then you can start to hire people. Brilliant. I often say that 
the, what makes a, a great salesperson is not the expert talker, but the expert, the well, the professional stalker. Mm. Do you know, it's all okay. about it's all about the follow up, is what I talk often mm. about. Um, okay, so moving on to the last question now is is software and applications, apps and things like that. Is there any apps or software that you could not live without? Mm, probably Evernote and uh, and Entreport. Which ones are they? Sorry, Entreport. Yeah, Evernote and Entreport. Entreport oh. is basically a marketing um, automation okay. platform. Yeah. Right, so email marketing, a CRM system, and all that kind of stuff. Fabulous. Um, yeah, and Evernote is amazing. I use, I just use it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, good. Well, Patrick, that's been really insightful. There's lots and lots of stuff there. Again, guys, there is a little button that you'll see what will be floating somewhere up here, so you can subscribe and get more of these uh, sound bites. But again. Thank you so much for your time this morning, Patrick. It's been wonderful speaking with you and hopefully we'll, we'll connect online in, in, in other places and we'll, we'll follow your journey around Tobago as well. Absolutely. It'll be amazing. I am sure thank it will. Thank you so much for being here. Fantastic. Wonderful. Well, thank you once again and we'll no doubt hopefully speak again soon. Cool. Take care, John. Thank you. I'm sat here now with the one and only, the UK number one motivational speaker, Brad Burton. How you doing, John? Are you all right? I'm um, absolutely fabulous, Brad. Wonderful to, to speak to you. How are you? Awesome. Kicking ass. You know, I um, as you may or may not know, I actually stepped down as a managing director of 4Networking, which is the organisation where really I sort of built my career upon. And um, I've retired. Yeah. I've retired. Although saying that, you know what, I've not <laughs> even stopped. So now I'm really good at the moment and everything's going in the right direction. Fantastic, mate. Good to hear. So just for the people so they can obviously hear a little bit more about what you do, Brad. So obviously, for networking, 10 years ago, mm. uh, now runs 5,000 meetings. Yeah, 5,000 meetings across the UK, over 5,000, but we'll just say 5,000. 